Hello everyone. Welcome back to our um, lab programming uh, videos in for for our um, parallel programming class. I'm going to, um, as discussed um, in the class, um, and also uh, per the e per uh, email message that I sent out on the Blackboard, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, create this video to show you how we are going to um, establish our program on CUDA to work on the filter. <coughs> what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to uh, show you, uh, I'm not going to show you in this image how to set, in, in this video, how to set up the CUDA and OpenCV. You should know this uh, by now and if not there are videos on the blackboard that can um, that you can use and you can you can you can uh, watch um, to set your project properly. I attached this file project to CUDA file dot cu to the project two um, assignment. It's an attachment there um, with the code um, w with the uh, with the instructional file as well as with your um, images uh, that you're going to be using. So this file is attached. It is a shell, and if you, <clears throat> what I would like you to do is, if you haven't started working on the project, or if your project giving is giving you compile errors, um, what I would like you to do is to go ahead and download this file from Blackboard, and then when you create your project that uses uses OpenCV and CUDA um, side by side, go ahead and delete everything in your um, kernel.cu file, and then. Um, 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 uh, copy and paste these content into your kernel file. When you run this project, as you see here, it is going to show you. Um, it's go it has to compile. It should compile on your program, on your on your pro on your computer. If it does not compile on your computer, you have an issue with some of your settings. So go ahead and make sure that all those settings are fine. And then I will show you um, a little console window, and uh, it says press one for CPU, two for GPU, and three for CPU and GPU. Um, if you press uh, one, it actually runs your your CPU um, image and it should be blank because uh, I, it's just a blank shell and if you <clears throat> press 2 it's going to run the non-tiled version of your CUDA kernel and it's gonna have to show you something some blank file just like that and then if you press um, 3 then it's going to run your tiled version of your shared CPU and uh, also your CPU side by side. This is your CPU code. Um, <clears throat> so, so for for this video, I'm going to go ahead and and as you see here, the kernel um, GPU kernel is empty. Uh, the GPU kernel tile is empty. I'm going to show you how to use shared memory in this version of the GPU tile, and the CPU um, filter is also um, is is empty. And so the CPU filter file is all the way towards the end of this project. Now, um, so so this is effectively the setting up of our project. So um, go ahead and download this file before you follow up with me and um, and and start working on your project. Okay, so let me just go ahead and go over what is in this project and what you should be doing in your program. First off, um, this file starts with all the include files. So it's basically, um, as we have done so far, it sets up your um, CUDA libraries and your OpenCV libraries. Also, I'm adding a time.h and this time.h is used to calculate how much time it takes on your CPU to perform an operation. Next, I'm defining the size of my shared memory block here, or rather my uh, my uh, thread blocks. Here, I'm using blocks of 16 threads by 16 threads, so I'm going to use two-dimensional blocks 16 by 16. 
I'm also defining the capital letter W as the half width of my filter. So if I wanted to run a 3x3 three three filter, I'm going to use W as equal to 1. So it's going to have 3 pixels on Y and 3 pixels on X um, in terms of its filter size. Um, if I wanted to use a 5x5 five five filter, I said W as 2. So it's going to have 5 images on 5 pixels on W on X and 5 pixels on Y. If I wanted a 7x7 seven seven image, I said W at 3. If I wanted a 9x9 um, nine nine filter, I said W as 4. So effectively, if W is, so, so the size of my filter is going to be 2 times W plus 1 by 2 times W plus 1. So 2W plus 1, 2W plus 1. 2w plus 1 times 2w plus 1 is going to be the size of my image. So let me actually go ahead and, and say these. Um, so I want you to also comment your code just like I do. K is the, actually, capital K is the um, size of block. So it's going to be K by K. And then uh, size of filter is 2w plus 1 times 2w plus 1. Now I'm setting these up uh, as constants so, you, so, that, so that I can use um, and have control over the size of my filter. Next, I'm going to show you the shell for your GPU kernel. The GPU kernel here is basically this kernel. uses um, the global memory without shared memory okay so you're going to you're going to have to fill this part out I'm not going to go over this this is easy and we have done this so far in the class um, for thresholding and for many other things um, so the con the logic here is easy what you need to do is to go in and fill in these to do lines um, so what's happening here is that there's an integer X and I set it as equal to 0. It's the pixel location in global memory that you need to calculate. Integer neighbor is also the neighbor location in global memory that you need to calculate when you're doing your filter. I'm going to explain how that's going to work. Uh, we are setting the sum equal to 0. That's basically the average value that we have. Now, next in the to-do is you calculate the global x and y location of your pixel based on thread index and block index. After you calculate that, you're going to calculate your um, index of your location based on x and y. Then you're going to run your filter. So you're going, you're going to start from j, negative w, j, w, j++. Plus plus. So you run 3 by 3 for loops here, these two for loops. You calculate the x and y of your neighbor location based on x, global x and global y, and j and i. When you calculate those, you notice that you need to run an if statement to run only for when the x and y for your neighbor do not fall outside of your image boundary. I'll talk about this in a little bit. And then you calculate your filter value. And then finally, you basically store the value, actually the sum over 9.0. Or the sum over 2 times w plus 1 over 2 times w plus 1. And this sum will be effectively um, how much um, your, um, uh, or, or the value of your filter uh, will, will be stored in the tiled destination. I'm going to show you how to write this GPU kernel tile. This is the shared memory version. Um, of your code. So the first thing you need to do is to fill this to do declare tile as shared memory. I'm going to show you how to do that. Then you're going to need to calculate the L sub X and L sub Y local location of a pixel neighbor in shared memory. Once you do that, you calculate your x, y, and index from your global memory. Then you read from global memory to fill the shared memory 
and sync thread there. After you fill the shared memory, then you're going to, just like what we did with the global memory, we're going to, right here, run our filter. Our filter is going to be two phase. Phase one, it's going to calculate whether a pixel neighbor is in global memory, or in the shared memory. If that was so, we run our kernel in the shared memory. If not, then we're not going to use anything from shared memory. We're going to use things from global memory, just like we did with the global memory version. And once we calculated our results, then we're going to store the sum times basically divided by the actual location or the size of our filter. So if we had a 3x3 three three filter, when we sum everything up, we divide them by 9. If we had a 5x5 um, 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 five five filter, we divide it by 25, and so on and so forth. For the GPU code, I'm not going to go over that um, concepts. And effectively, the rest of this basically shows you how the calculation for um, your CPU and your GPU code um, uh, run. Um, and the helper functions. You do need to fill in all of these to-do files, um, sh uh, declaring your um, events on GPU for benchmarking, um, to recording, starting your recording time on the GPU, stopping your recording time on GPU, synchronizing your recording time, and calculating the elapsed time. These things you need to fill up yourselves. There are videos on the Blackboard that show you how to do these concepts. Finally, for both version, uh, I created two threshold with CUDA with shared helper function and a threshold with CUDA no shared helper function that you see up here. And one of them will be invoking the kernel without shared memory, and the other one will be invoking the kernel with shared memory. GPU kernel tiled and just the GPU kernel alone. Um, all, all, all of the memory um, setup and memory teardown on both device and host are taken care of, so you don't have to worry about uh, setting those up um, and focusing. You need to be focusing on writing this program. Okay, next I'm going to explain how index calculation works in 2D. All right, so let's talk about. Our, um, our calculations for offset and how um, we are going to go about and create this project. Um, basically, if you remember from what I talked about in your code, we have certain things that we need to calculate. For each location in threads, we have a thread index, and I call them th.x and th.y. And we also have a block index, I call them b.x and b.y, because we have two-dimensional threads and two-dimensional blocks here. Each of these blocks also have a block dimension, I call them bd.x and bd.y. So bd.x and bd.y are effectively um, how many threads in x and how many threads in, um, in y do we have. Um, in um, in our kernel, and also we have a grid dimension dot x. I call this g dot x, and a grid dimension dot y. I call this g dot y. So this is the this, these block dimensions or numbers of threads, number of threads, and um, and these guys grid dimension um, dot x and grid dimension dot y are number of blocks in each dimension. Okay, so we're going to make our calculations based off of this. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have an image. Oops. Um, we have an image, and this is going to be effectively a um, two-dimensional picture. And this two-dimensional picture that I have here um, is made of a bunch of um, 
pixels in X and Y. And so let's make this a little bit more pixely. See, perhaps more pixels over there. And some more pixels on the x axis. Alright, so this is this basically gives me a bunch of pixels that I can work with. So there we go. A few more pixels. Wouldn't hurt. So each of these um, two dimensional um, scenes here are going to be basically effectively my, um, my pixels. So, so what I did in, in the code, um, I, I basically created a, um, a W for the width of my kernel and K, the width of my filter, pardon me, K, the size of my block. So my blocks are going to be K by K. So what I'm doing here is now, let me just change the color, is I'm going to create blocks of images um, basically k by k so kind of if you think about this this is going to be one block and then this is going to be my next block and then this is going to be my next block and then this is going to be my next block and I'm not really accurate in terms of the sizes that I have I'm drawing here so it's just I'm trying to just go over the basics so please excuse my inaccuracy um, now what we have here is now we've got K by K threads in each of these um, these blocks also I'm going to use so so basically I'm when I when I'm using a thread and so these wiggly lines are going to be each thread. So each of these wiggly lines, my threads, are going to have a pixel to themselves to operate. Right? So that's going to be a thread. All of these are going to be threads that are operating within their own blocks. So basically, let's actually go ahead and make each of these a different color. So these are going to be my red threads and then my blue threads for example that are going to be run now let's take a look at for example a random thread say this thread down over here and if I look at this thread this thread is going to have a thread index dot x and a thread index dot y right which ranges from 0, so each of these range from 0 to k minus 1. Each of the thread indices will range from 0 to k minus 1 because my blocks have um, um, are, are, are size k. Also, if you look at my the, the, the block that this thread belongs to, this is going to be a block index dot x and a block index dot y. Now, how many are these? I don't know. These are going to be the size of my image divided by k minus 1 and 0. So this is going to range that much. But it will be some number. So this is going to have a number in the, the block dot x and block dot y. It's going to have some number. And it's really easy to calculate those when you get get there. Now, also, um, my my grid is going to have a grid dimension dot x and a grid dimension dot y. So if I if I draw this, this is going to be my grid dimension dot y. Okay. Now, based of these values, I can calculate any number of pixels actually um, or any any location of each of these threads actually how does that 
that look like? Let's take a look at this thread, for example, this thread down here that I, I picked, and it's got some thread index.x and some thread index.y. Now, if you look at this, this thread is going to have an actual physical location along the x and along the y axis. So it's going to be, if you, if, you, if you draw its actual location in the image, you're going to have an actual physical x and y. And the key here is to calculate what that x and y is, what that global x and global y is. Okay? If you can calculate this to see what the global x and global y is, then from that point you can also calculate its actual offset in the image. How does the actual offset look like? If, if you look at this, um, this picture, in memory it's actually stored in a bunch of bytes, just like that. So there's no such thing as a two-dimensional memory. So if you calculate the x and y here, based on that x and y, you can actually find the physical location. And this, I call this index. Okay. And then we can calculate the actual index of our image based on those x and y's that we calculated. Now let's first look at the x and see what is the x value for this guy. See, this guy has a thread index.x, which means that it is how far in the x dimension from its own block it is at, right? So if thread index is, so let, let's just draw one of these blocks, let's just uh, blow one of these blocks up, and so we're going to basically, we're going to basically get one of these blocks, and I'm going to just blow this block up. Just like that. And then so this is going to have a bunch of pixels inside of it. And based on thread index and dot x and thread index dot y, you can actually calculate which pixel um, it is inside of its own block. So if you look at this guy, this guy. Its thread index starts from 0, 1, 2, and 3. So thread index of this guy is dot x of this guy is 3. And thread index dot y of this guy is 2. So on the x axis, it is actually 3 units in 3 units in in the block. So that you can calculate the so this gives you the thread index dot x for each of these guys. Now that is thread index dot x within its own block, but that means that there are so many blocks behind it, right? Which means that there are so many threads behind it. So you basically add its thread index to how many threads are behind it. And how many are those? It's easy to calculate. There are number of blocks behind it, right, times size of each of those blocks. Right? So then the x basically becomes easy to calculate. The global x is going to be the location of thread in its own block in x plus how many blocks were before it, which is the number of its own blocks, times how many threads in x each of those blocks had, which will be block dimension dot x, right? So your global x basically is easy to calculate. It's block dimension of each block in x axis times the number of block, which is how many blocks are before that block, plus number of threads that are behind it in that own block. So that's going to be calculating your, your global x. How are we going to do global y? It's fairly easy. It's basically the same logic applied. If I wanted to calculate the y location of this thread, its own thread dot y tells me how many threads are behind it in you know, its own block, and then how many blocks are behind it times the size of that block. So it's going to be the global y of your image is going to be thread index dot y plus block index dot y times block dimension 
x.y. That will give you the actual location in x and y in your image. Same applies to another another block. So for example, if I pick up, um, say, this thread, and I want to run and see what is its own x and y, right? What is its x and y? It's easy to calculate. Basically, it's thread index dot x. Is that? So this is its thread index dot x, and these are block dot x times dimension dot x, or rather block dimension dot x. And same with its own y. In, in y, there are that many, so it's basically thread dot y. And how many blocks are behind it? Block number dot y times block dimension dot y. This will give you the location, physical location of your thread in all of the thread blocks that you have and the location of the of the um, and, and the y location of the thread. So, uh, same with the pixel because each thread is running each one pixel so you've got one pixel per thread. Now when we, we are trying to access global memory we need to actually access our global memory by effectively looking at an index. So in in memory, I don't really have a two-dimensional thing. I have x and y that I calculated here, but these x and y won't help me. I need to convert these into an index. That conversion is also fairly easy. The index of the image starts from um, top left, so this is going to be index number 0, index number 1, index number 2, and you go all the way to this last index here is going to be your grid dimension dot x, which is how many blocks in x you have, times block dimension dot x okay so in each row of your um, image you've got these many um, pixels so in each row I've got block dimension dot x times grid dimension dot x times grid dimension dot x. That's how many pixels I have in each row. Okay? Then what I'm gonna have to do if I if I have like if I'm in a row like so if I'm in this row I've got a bunch of rows behind me. How many rows behind me I've got? That is equal to my global y, right? So if I calculate my global y that tells me how many rows I have behind me okay so what I'm gonna have to do is then from here if I wanted to know how many threads are behind me or how many pixels are behind me all I need to do is just to multiply these two entities how many rows I have behind me and how many threads each of those rows um, has and of course I'll add my own thread in my own global index to it. So my index, my global index, is going to be calculated by my own x plus my own y, that's the number of rows that are behind me, times how many pixels were in those rows, which is going to be block dimension dot x times grid dimension dot x and this will give me my overall index in my image okay so let's go in and let's go and calculate those things in our program